This is Stephanie, and this is the Mocha Minutes Podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to let you know about something that's a little new here at the Mocha Minutes Podcast. We are now participating in Buy Me a Coffee. So if you haven't heard, buymeacoffee.com is a place where you can show some um, support and some love monetarily to some of your favorite content creators. That includes me. <laughs> um, so it's in the increments of either a dollar, three dollars or five dollars. And you can do as many as you would like. Um so I just wanted to let you guys know would love, love, love some support. So if you would go to buymeacoffee.com backslash mocha minutes, I would greatly appreciate it. It will also be in the show notes. Okay, here we go. Ever since I met you, you're the only love I've known. And I can't forget you. Though I must face it all alone All at once I'm drifting on a lonely sea Wishing you'd come back to me And that's all that matters now All at once I'm drifting on a lonely sea Holding on to memories And it hurts me more than you know, so much more than it shows, all at once, all at once, I'm drifting on a lonely sea, wishing you'd come back to me, and it hurts me more than you know, so much more than it shows. All at once. Whew. Hello and welcome to the Mocha Menace Podcast. Let me tell y'all something. I don't have no idea where I get the goddamn audacity to hit that note in that Whitney song. Part of me feels like I should edit it out. But like my girl cook, I ain't had this shit. So I hope I'm not pissy. Please do not report me to the American Idol judges or AGT. Wait, is that America's Got Talent? Yeah. Don't be interrupting me, y'all. Don't be don't be reporting me uh, unless um you want me to be your lounge singer. I don't know why I have a dream of being like a cruise singer, like Jennifer Hudson was, or a lounge singer like Kelly Clarkson. I don't know. I don't know why I'm having this whole thing like. Ooh, girl let me do this but welcome to the Mocha Men's podcast I am Stephanie thank you so much for joining me so I am recording actually first day of women's health month women's health lord women's history month lord have mercy women's health well I mean health is involved um so had to start off with when I think about women's history and music and y'all know I'm loving um just Having my nice little karaoke moment. Like, um, I don't know who I be thinking I am, but that's where I am. Um, I had to start with Whitney. And All At Once has always been a song that I just just love. It's a bop. It, literally, if I hear it, I just got to stop and just jam on out or just listen to it. Whitney is my queen when it comes, I think, about, you know, female singer. She's my queen. You know, it's her, um, Mariah, and Celine Dion um, is up there. Yeah, so welcome to the show. I am here. I'm solo dolo. So I just wanted to have, um, just talk about a couple of things and, you know, do my little rants. But let me start with some Bravo high notes. So some of these could be low notes. I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to Candace. Like sing, like sing high notes and do low notes. Yeah, whatever. So let's talk about some Bravo, shall we? Um... If you were to tell me having two reunions on starting the same week back to back was not going to give me everything I need for two hours, I'd be like, absolutely not. But Miami and Beverly Hills started their reunion this week 
And they're back to back. So they're I didn't realize their their seasons ended at the same time. I don't know if it's I have to look back at like the scheduling. But the fact that both of their reunions started at the exact same night and I'm like getting all of my stuff. Yeah, I'm enjoying I enjoyed first the first parts of both. Um, I will say as much as Miami is disjointed on who I like adore and who I'm fine to miss the trip. Miami is the better dress cast. Like they really are a, a better, like as a whole, as a group grade, if I'm doing group grades, because with every reunion, you can do like one person that like knocks it out. Another person like, girl, where are you going? I'm okay, wait, I see where they going. Where are you going? Right. Miami is one of the better dress cast as a whole, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, if you were to tell me maybe halfway through the season, we would be getting Alexia v. Larsa. I'm like, I don't know. Because apparently Alexia and Mar- Marisol have a uh, podcast and they be they be running that they be running that half a low. And I'm like, I can't say that she don't deserve it, per se. But you know, it's a chuckle to me how they are starting to move, right? So something that Marcus said in the first part of reunion, and I'm glad I wasn't the only person who noticed this. Because I was like, you know, shout out to my girl Zell. Because I'm glad I wasn't the only person going, wait a minute, hold up. I don't think I like the way that this is going. Um, Yeah. So he said when he was talking, when him and Larsa was talking to Andy, <sighs> And he said, they can't even wash the dishes in my house. I don't think he realized that you're saying that to a majority Latina, whether it's Afro-Latina or not, Latina cast, talking about, like, basically equating them to a maid, that you thought this was the best thing. And the the fact of the matter is, is, like, I'm surprised a lot of other people didn't catch that. Um, but Marcus, y- y- y'all are doing a little bit too much because I'm not exactly sure why Lars is like, nobody else is talking about anybody else's father. I'm sorry. Is anybody else's daddy, Michael Jordan? <laughs> Let me tell you something. LeBron's son, Shaquille's son, Dirk Nowitzki's son, um, Alex Rodrigo's son, any of these big time athletes start dating one of these housewives, we damn sure are going to be talking about their parents. Because, like, the thing, I feel like the only thing, reason why y'all not really talking, and I'm, I'm saying the hashtag y'all, not the y'all. Um, y'all not talking about Martina that much is because she's married to a woman. If Julia was married to a man in tennis, y'all probably would be talking more about that. Because, I'm sorry, Martina Nar- Narvatilova is that girl. And I'm glad that she, I think, is also cancer-free, kind of like Gertie, which I absolutely love that she can ring the bell. Ring the bell! Ring the bell! Um... Uh, so, but the first part of reunion is fine. I, I, a part of me is kind of glad that Larsa and Kiki worked out their, uh, issue, but Larsa can be very self-absorbed and very Delulu because you can't say Kiki hurt my feelings when she's talking about a relationship, but then also are negating the fact that you said, girl, get a man and we can hang out. Larsa, it's like, you don't think about the stuff that you say to other people. And when Homegirl pulled out that light, I would say it's not a ring light. Um, and it's not like a, a, a light case that, you, you know, you can put around your phone to get light. Homegirl pulled out like a small, like, fog light to get lighting and attach it to her phone. I said, girl, what the hell is going on? I was like, is that what we're doing at the meal break? We're bringing out a, a light? Girl, what is this? But, and I said it on Twitter, and I mean that. Let me tell you something. Gertie's going to light her up better than that light is ever going to do. Because the thing about it is, it's like, the reunion, and this is how it should be, you come and face-to-face to people to work out things that they have said on and off camera about this show. So, yeah, Gertie got a lot to say, especially to you. Um. So, good first part. Beverly, Beverly Hills... You know, even though I thought Miami's part one was a little bit better, I did ask the question, and I think of, of the 37 people who 
voted. They agreed with me as well that Miami was the better part one, probably because um, Alexa started lighting Larsa up. No tea, no shade. Um, for Beverly Hills, let me talk about Anna Marie. I think she said it's a Dutch name, and then she's like, it's pronounced Anna Marie, and I hope I'm getting this correct. Hopefully I am. Here's the deal. Anna Marie, two, Andy said anesthesiologist and anesthetist sounds the same. You know what doesn't sound the same, Andy? Anesthesiologist and nurse anesthetist. That does not sound the same. Here's the thing. Anne Marie has probably been saying anesthetist and everybody's just thinking, oh, if you're saying it like that, that must mean some kind of doctor. And so she has rested on people not asking her follow-up questions. She has rested on that because these ladies in the Beverly Hills streets, because Kyle said, I didn't know the difference either. It's like, uh, they don't ask follow-up questions. You talking to somebody who's sister, sister-in-law? sister is an anesthesiologist so she knew the difference here's the deal you i don't think she said the word nurse i think that's the issue so you did misrepresent yourself and then you got mad and so to deflect you said well this is what crystal said about y'all um i hear y'all because she's like i'm like girl they are not educated and i'm like uh they kind of aren't though girl but whatever you know what nope nope mm -mm, not gonna do that However, comma, um, Anna Marie, what does that have to do with anything that you have done? Because I remember that episode where she kind of insinuated that Sutton had an eating disorder and did say Crystal said it. And I'm like, that's not true. It's like, baby, you could have just walked that back. Just walk it back. Just walk it back and say, I shouldn't have, I should not have insinuated that. And I'm sorry. That's all she had to do. I think, um, for the most part, she kind of did apologize to Sutton. But she also did owe, you know, for all intents and purposes, she did owe Crystal an apology. She's like, I'm sorry that I am like, I insinuated that you said it. I shouldn't have did that. If you're apologizing for your comments, then apologize for what you did to Crystal. See how that all is folded into each other. Um, And then when Dorit and Garcelle was talking about the issue, Anna Marie bringing up her, her um, argument with Sutton and then saying, well, you didn't speak up for me. And I'm sitting here like, well, Anna Marie, you didn't speak up for Garcelle when uh, Doree said that she was attacking her. I'm sorry, were you that? Because you were most, if she wasn't in the room, that'd be one thing. Like the whole thing about, you know, I'm not feeling safe with your kids. She's not there. So it's like, she don't have to, but you were there. When Dorit said that, oh, I'm sorry. I don't remember hearing you pipe up. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right, because you didn't. Ma'am, this is not about you. Why are you making this seem like, like, oh, can I just say something? Ma'am, you didn't come here to argue. You're like, I'm not going to speak over you. You're not going to do, basically, you're not going to participate in a reunion, but you wanted to take a situation that had nothing to do with you and make it about yourself. You wanted to insert yourself, but you don't want to have a direct conversation with Crystal. Okay. All right. So let's see what happens on the second part. Because I think, um, I think like the quick snippet that I saw about Doree and Erica um, discussing before the reunion started, what Kyle said, um, she's like, does she think I'm dumb? Why would she message me before the reunion? Because she knows she was seeing you tomorrow. A lot of people do that. Now she's like, I had not heard from her in two months. I am listening to Dorit. I didn't hear her say that I tried to get in contact and she has not returned my calls in two months. She said, I have not heard from her. I'm like, so have you been trying to reach out to Kyle? Because that's not what it sounded like you said. It's not like I haven't heard from her in two months. That thing when she said about their friendship, I think there was a Christmas tree in the, um, in the clubhouse. Let me just be very clear. Um, <clears throat> You wouldn't be hearing from me either. I was like, but also I'm a grown up and I probably, you probably would have heard from me. Or if you had like reached out or anything like that, it wouldn't like, oh baby, I'd be like, okay, so now I know where I am with you. I think what it is is that Dorit has prided herself on being the Kyle whisperer on this show. And the minute that Kyle was like, girl, she is not the my whisperer, she got upset. She's like, how dare she like bring this up? I'm like, mm. Here's the deal. She was not talking about her and Mauricio. She was talking about 
we don't need to bring up that me and you have an issue because essentially that was not portrayed on the screen for the for the season. So Kyle and I don't say this too often. Kyle had a point. One, if you come and talk about Mauricio, it's like, yeah, she's like, she knows she got to talk about that. They pick cameras back up to, to, to like discuss this. You and Dorit essentially not being all that cool is not from the show. So she's like, we ain't got to bring that up. Because guess what? I don't think Kyle would have brought it up. She wouldn't have. She wouldn't have brought that up at all. Because she knew what she had to do. She knew she was going to sit there and be hammered about the whole shit about Mauricio. She already knew. Which is why she's like, it did hurt my feelings when Erica said, I want everybody to be eviscerated. But she understood where that came from. Let me say this sidebar. Erica... You were eviscerated because of how you acted. Not because you were involved, just plainly because your husband did something bad and people eviscerated me. No, they didn't. They eviscerated you because of how the fuck you were acting. They were eviscerating you because of your behavior. Behave better and you won't get eviscerated. See how that works? There's other people who have been involved in lawsuits. I'm thinking of, oh, I don't know, Teresa Judice. She answered the questions, but let's be very clear. Was she eviscerated? No, because people didn't look at her behavior like, oh, it warrants me digging in your ass. <laughs> Erica, it can't be both. I am very excited for the Mary to Medicine uh, reunion is starting on Sunday. Cannot wait. I watched um, <laughs> the Messy Monday live with Carlos and Heavenly, and when I tell you, they are such a good duo. Just let them recap. Um, shows, but I think it might be a little bit more fun if Carlos and Heavenly recap shows that they are not on and or involved in, because I don't know what she would say about um, the love and marriage folks. I know she got a whole bunch to say, but like let them like recap um, other shows that Carlos is not producing and Heavenly is not on. Uh, I, I don't know who I want her. I don't, not her, him. I'm thinking about Carlos. I need him to do a recap for Bold and Bougie because when I tell you I'm un- I'm loving this show, I really am. It's actually kind of good. Tamika Foster is a level of the Lulu that is housewife level. No Tino Shade, she fit in right in on Atlanta being so delusional. Like, girl, I am busy. I don't have time for this, like, hood booger mess. Like, girl, why are you here? <laughs> why is she here, Ike? But I like the two princesses. I really do like Malaysia. She still is giving me basketball-wise Malaysia, but I liked Malaysia on basketball wise. So that's totally fine. Mind you, this has nothing to do with Bravo, and I just put it in Bravo high notes. Let me get back to Bravo. Okay. So I've caught up on Summer House, and I heard the whispers about what happened. And, of course, because um, Lindsay is not well-liked, of course, people are going to make it higher than it needs to be. And I'm like, girl, y'all need to stop it right now. Because I didn't see y'all getting all up in arms about people weaponizing her miscarriage. Or literally acting like, or just treating it like it didn't mean all that much. Because I know she wasn't pregnant for that long. But, honey, she was in the emergency room. She could have bled out and died. But that's neither here nor there. So, uh, her and Carl had an argument. And she said, she... Intim- she said, and not intimated, she flat out said it to Gabby, that she thinks he was not sober. And Gabby's like, girl, what? Now, for somebody who's trying, like, who's working at the sobriety and it's a daily thing, yeah, I was like, yeah, Lindsay, you're not writing this. That's actually kind of awful. You, Because, one, to say he's only mean to you because he is on, like, he's taking a substance is weird because as someone who's watched the show, unless... Carl was literally drunk and or high the entire time. He has done some shit where he's been like shitty to people completely sober. So that's not it. But apparently Lindsay has put out a mess, a um, statement after the episode. So she said, after watching back this week's episode, I wish I had used better wording. I was emotional and hurt by what had transpired earlier in the night. And what I said was meant to be a private conversation at home with one of my best girlfriends. It technically was, but girl, it's a camera in y'all house. No, okay, let me get back. I have never questioned his sobriety before this moment, and from day one, I was his biggest supporter. I have always been transparent on the show about my feelings, have learned on my and have leaned on my friends for support, and that was my only intention here. Now y'all know I I I um 
I summer in the in the hub house. So I uh, I do like Lindsay for the show. Here's the deal. Lindsay, you could have kept all of this. And I like Lindsay. You can tell she w- works in PR. So she could have kept the first sentence where she I was mo- like use better wording. I should not have insinuated that I questioned his sobriety. I was wrong to do that and I apologize directly to Carl. <laughs> see, the thing about it is, it's like we're going to see, because the thing about it is, it's not even going to matter because one, people are going to be team Carl anyway because a lot of people don't like Lindsay. Because I think a lot of people forget that um, Carl was hell on wheels to these women the first like two, three, four seasons of, of Summer House outside of Lindsay. Um, because Lindsay was like him and Lindsay kind of like I'm trying to think was Lindsay the one he finger banged? I can't remember. Yeah, finger banging the in the Bravo lexicon is hilarious to me. <clears throat> so, yeah, Lindsay, you can just apologize. Maybe she did apologize to him. Maybe there's a little bit more. Who knows? But that is what she put on her story. Um, she's like, I wish I had better wording. It's like there's nothing wrong with having your feelings, but understand words mean things and. Lindsay, just apologize. It's like, one, I was wrong to do so. I mean, those were my feelings. However, comma, it's not right for me to question sobriety, especially when he's working so hard at it. You can literally hate that man forever for what he's done to y'all, for y'all relationship and y'all engagement and wedding being blown up. But just compartmentalize that um, and just apologize. The statement just really just highlights the fact that Lindsay's an August Leo, and sometimes we have a very hard time apologizing. It is literally like working a muscle. And I know I've said this to a lot of people. Lindsay and I same, share the same birthday. So I, mm, yeah, I know how hard. Sometimes it is a struggle apologizing as an August Leo. <laughs> or Leo in general. <laughs> Let's be like, look, look. that's not even like to keep it a buck. Um, it's very hard for us to apologize. It is really like working a, it's like working a muscle of, the thing about it is, it's like, yes, no one is, because I think a lot of times for us and for some other people who have trouble apologizing, you think that um, apologizing means, apologizing means that you can't have your feelings. No, you can, but sometimes your feelings need a place. And right now, like questioning sobriety is not his face, is not the place for you to like, Like, for your feelings. It's like, yeah, your feelings could be like, he's saying something hurtful, whether he is sober or not. And for all intents and purposes, I think he was sober. Because for some odd reason, and I think it's just the way that he represented it, because he talked about his sobriety and his um, struggles with alcohol and with substances, people are thinking that he was mean or said some asshole shit because he was not sober. Um, As someone who has had their issues with... One Kimberly Richards on Beverly Hills. I have said this. Whether she is sober or not, she's an asshole. She has problems like saying shit. She can be an asshole to people. Completely sober. So the thing about it is, but I think people have been giving them, giving him the space to go, oh my gosh, he, oh, that's why he was an asshole? Because he was he wasn't sober? I'm like, or he just has the opportunity to be so. It's like, yeah, it's like I think he's more. Uh, he was more uninhibited when he was not sober about being an asshole. But let's not just like blame him being an asshole on him not being sober. That's not the same thing. But And maybe this is the summer where people are going to realize that the relationship that folks should have been putting on the magnifying glass and saying, girl, when is this going to be over is actually Kyle and Amanda. <laughs> That's the relationship. And mind you, This is the same Kyle who wrote a long ass, what, four, five, six, seven page email to the whole house telling them be nice to Amanda. No one has ever given them him the shit that they give um, Lindsay. And also Kyle Cook is also an August Leo. I know. I I don't know what to say. Yeah. So I don't who when I tell you, I just who Chile. It's a lot of Wuchale when I think about it, only because, yeah, I'm going to say this right now. Lindsay was not correct in doing that. She's dead ass wrong for questioning his sobriety because he's mean to you. He don't need to be not sober to be mean to you. Um, So there's that. I, I don't know why you thought that's what had to happen, but you know, that's not it. 
Um, more Bravo, I guess. So, in a shock to no one, Jax and what's that girl's name? Oh my God, I can't remember this. I, how did I just blank on this lady's name? <laughs> Oh, Miss Rotten Hell herself. They are separated. Brittany. That's, I had to think. God. They're getting, um, they're separated. And like, please play for us. And I'm like, Rotten Hell. <laughs> That's how I feel. I'm kidding. Like, girl, we still not going to watch that show. Y'all can leave us alone. Um, the stuff with Portia is ongoing. And people, it's like, girl, I, mm-mm, I'm not talking about peace juice. And then add in, Raquel is suing, um, Ariana and Tom and revenge porn is up in here somewhere because they're in California and and revenge porn and it being illegal is really a thing. So we're going to see how the heck this works out. If you follow the talk of shame on Instagram, follow her. She has a very good breakdown of what it, um, what it said. What caught me was that she said in her, um, I guess in the suit that James came to her parents' house and kicked the family dog. I'm like, what? He kicked the family dog. If y'all don't get Graham Cracker Pippi out of James's house, because Graham, you are in danger, girl. <laughs> you are in danger. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Or am I? I don't know. Um, in another turn of events, and I think this last Bravo thing I may want to dis- like discuss, I do not remember a time <laughs> where Andy was doing press with Housewives, where they were all on the same stage and you were like doing press and out comes Housewives. So Andy being on Kelly Clarkson with Candace and Wendy, I feel like they were at it because I think he was already there. Um, And then they came out. I was like, so this is new. And add on top of it for they gave the Potomac... um, seating chart and it was the first time ever Giselle is not first chair and everybody's like girl I am gagging I'm like but and I'm sitting here like but y'all said she don't deserve first chair there's a lot of times she don't but I think for fan favorites they should have first chair because I'm like let me just be very clear there have been times when Karen did not have first chair and it didn't warrant it either because I'm looking at this like Karen and me are first chair and I'm like no, we're not doing this. Uh, Karen shouldn't be first chair. Neither should Mia. I feel like first chair, not like, not for nothing, should be Wendy. Wendy should have. She should be occupying one of those chairs. The good first half of this season has been about her and Neca's issue. So it should have been her, either Wendy and Neca. But it's like because Neca's a first um, year housewife, then no, they're not going to do that. That literally, and the bad part. <laughs> It's like the bad part about it is it's like this may be the season where this is probably one of the only seasons in the last maybe three or four seasons where Giselle being first chair would have been fine for me because of her issue with Candace and somewhat of Wendy. So, yeah. So this is a year like, oh, no, she could have been first chair. When I'm thinking about who should be first chair this season. Giselle, honestly, it warranted it. We'll see. It must be that second half of the season. It Wendy, like maybe Mia warrants that. Karen, no. Ashley, no. Candace, maybe. Um, but yeah, for me, it's Wendy. And actually, it could be Giselle because of like the stuff, like the issues that they had. Ashley is fine to sit on the end where she is. Robin, yeah, no. And I'm a Robin fan. Like. <laughs> I feel like Rodney. Rodney says he has a soft spot for Ashley. I have a soft spot for Robin. No, And the thing about it is with the soft spot, you can actually just say, however, comma, I tell you when that bitch is wrong. Okay, so the whole thing about the conversation about Giselle's daughter and going to college. You don't fucking speak to this woman, Giselle. She ain't got to be nice to you. Because I'm sorry, I'd have been in my phone playing the Candy Crush while you talking. Or I would have, like, I don't know if I would have got it from the um from the table. But I, I swear I'd been sitting down, down at that table eating my food and not talking and not even engaging. And the thing about it is, I think 
I don't know if it's Candace or Wendy has said that like we weren't making faces because of her talking about her child. Ma'am, you can't slip up here and say, I'm not going to speak to them and then expect them to be nice to you. Who do you think you who do you think they are? Karen? You and Karen are very good at that. Because I like to tell people, Karen and Giselle are a lot more similar than y'all give them credit for. Is that enough Bravo, y'all? I don't know. Um, okay, this is sidebar. Uh, apparently, Gwyneth Paltrow, Miss Poosh herself, apparently there's a um, tidbit, a little snippet of her saying um, uh, something about black, um, talking about like that white women have things to learn from black women. So this is, I found this on the neighborhood talk. I'm only doing that because I'm looking right at it. So let me read it. Neighbors, what do y'all think about this? Gwyneth Paltrow recently opened up about her relationship with black women and how she believes their ideologies can help women of all races. While speaking at a panel this week with Dr. Ella Bell, a black woman, Gwyneth praised how black women speak life into themselves and those around them. She says that she wishes white women adapt the same positive traits. My black women friends know themselves, love themselves in a way that I think white women are not taught to. I think white women are taught to be competitive with one another, which is something I've tried to work so hard to dispel because I don't believe in competition between women. But we're raised to be competitive, to be jealous, to look over each other's shoulders. And at least in my circle of black women, at least in my circle of black women, they do not do that. There's an immediate acceptance and safety and appreciation. White women have a lot to learn from black women. I've learned so much from my black friends about ruthless self-acceptance and full love of self, she said. And I think we as white women in this culture have a lot to learn from our black sisters and the way in which they respect themselves. And I'm not sure exactly where that comes from. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you exactly where it comes from. If we don't love ourselves, nobody else does. It's amazing that people are like, I don't understand. Like, they, the thing about it is, it's like, I have, I talk a lot about, about how the black women around me keep me grounded or pump me up. I don't know where life, my life would be if I didn't have the black women that are in my life around me or just having black women around me in general. It hits different when a black woman compliments me or a black woman bigs me up. Because let's be very clear, if it's not us bigging each other up, nobody's going to do it. Because when she said that we're taught to be competitive, I'm like, that's true. You are. Everybody is competition. But here's the thing. When it comes to beauty standards, white women are the top of the food chain. And still they have to compete because they're like, oh, blondes have more fun. Ooh, redheads, y'all the devil. Or ooh, br brunettes, y'all mysterious. Or whatever, right? So yeah. Um, being competitive with other women, that is across all boards. But I think from our perspective, that's something that she pretty much has noticed. It's always competition. Who's a prettier white girl? That's how it seems like from what her statement seems and from seeing other white women, that's how they, some of them do act. Like, I'm the prettiest white girl here. I'm like, I have blonde hair. I'm better. I have blue eyes. I am better. But the smeech is on the beach. Okay. So I find it very interesting that people are amazed that a demographic who has been denigrated inside and outside of our community can still find ways to pick ourselves up and love ourselves. It is like a art for us. And people just like, I don't, I don't understand. It's like, because, and then you have to say, because other demos don't show us the same love. Even the men in our own community don't do that. Some of them, and I don't want to hear y'all. I do. No, we ain't talking about you loving your mama or your wife or your child or your sister or your grandmother or your aunt. I'm talking about the entire demo. There are men who are like, oh, I, ugh, I like women, but only talk about the ones that they're fucking. I love women, but only if I get to put my dick in them. And only women that they love in their lives are probably the one that either birthed them or have birthed children for them. And then on top of that, some of them like to weaponize those women in their lives against women who are not going to put up with their bullshit. And then you tell them, you, you're, use, you're weaponizing your mama or your grandmother and like saying, oh, this is what she did with my grandfather. And let me ask a question. Because then if you say, hey, do me a favor, go ask your grandmother, was she happy to be coupled and or married to your grandfather? 
How many, I don't know. I know plenty of women over a certain age, and when I'm saying over a certain age, about 70, who were like, oh, yeah, no. I stayed because of my kids. I stayed because of security. I Not because they love them or because they were happy in their relationship. They didn't stay because they were happy. They stayed because they had to. Women could not get bank accounts on their own until 1970s. You know women who are who have been adults well over that time. So what do you why do you think they stayed? Because they loved a man? Absolutely not. Some of them did because they did have the love and they held on to it, but love was not enough. And believe me, if they could have just walked out, they could have. Because I think sometimes men who weaponize the the women in their family forget one big thing. Some of some of those women are abuse victims, physical and verbal. So no, they couldn't just walk out. And sometimes it takes people a few times to just leave. But y'all don't factor that, you know what, nope, nope, I'm not going to do that today. That's a whole different discussion. So yeah, yeah that, that just kind of, mm. yeah, uh, yeah, that just kind of threw me off. But I kind of like, it's always interesting because you're waiting for the the other shoe to drop when you see um, non-black women talk about black women you're always like girl what you bought what kind of backhanded thing you going to say and to me that does not seem backhanded so um kind of interesting kind of interesting okay so let's talk about something the thing i really wanted to talk about well i like talking about anybody who knows me knows i love talking about bravo but i wanted to just for a minute discuss um the whole Jess Hilarious v. T.S. Madison and how it highlights something that's glaringly gross. So um, Jess Hilarious is now the third coach. She is the replacement for um, Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club, and she brought up the 52-part Risa Tisa um, saga, who the fuck did I marry? And um, I did not make it the whole way through. I think I made it to like part 14, 15. And then on Twitter, someone had did a synopsis. So Risa Tisa's um, saga was like 52 um, parts long. I think at most, at, at most, TikTok makes, like the limit is 10 minutes. And I think for the most part, all of those parts had 10 minutes. I'm not exactly sure. <clears throat> And it's like, it was from start to finish. So it's kind of like, if you're talking about her, if she's giving you piece by play by play of the entire relationship of a, like maybe two or three years, it's going to take a little bit of time. But yeah, she was very, um, how, what's the word I want to use? Oh God, what is the word I want to use? I know the word is escaping me. I don't want to use but, yeah, 52 parts is a lot. Apparently, there's another woman who put out her own part. It's not 52 parts. But, basically, she has her own saga of a ain't shit dude that she married. Basically, um, it's the hobosexual chronicles. Another part. She's like, I'm going to pick up my part and I'm going to give my part. I'm like, girl, what is happening right now? Um in this kind of thing, there's a lot of things that women have talked about, and I'm like, girl, bring back shame. Why are you telling us this? This is just... <sighs> Risa Tisa, I don't think she had a big following before she started it, but then, you know, this is what happens when things catch fire. That's exactly what happened. So she, um, you know, uh, Jess Larish brought that up, and Charlemagne, who on more than one occasion says that, he is an advocate and an ally for women, most notably black women. He um, tried to sell, he tried to sell crazy and some folks bought it because he was like, this sound like big back behavior. Um, and just said, it's definitely giving Sheila. Now, Sheila is um, Jill Scott's character from Why Did I Get Married? Where um, she was a larger woman. She got put off the pain, because, uh, the plane, sorry. Um, saying that she had to buy two seats. Uh, her husband and her supposed friend didn't get off the plane. Home plane. I can't say, why can't I say plane today? Um, didn't get off the plane, and homegirl drove to the couple's retreat. 
See, the thing about it, it, or just a couple's trip. I know, a couple's trip or retreat. So, yeah, because I still remember when her friends were like, wait a minute, where the hell is Sheila? You let her drive? Why didn't you drive with her? See, the thing about it is the red flag for me wasn't her husband not driving with her. It was her friend. And I'm like, oh, girl, I, I was like, whoa, wait, why your friend not getting off? Because there's no way in hell that my friend is driving by herself if this is actually my friend. I'm like, you're not going to get off the I'll get off the phone. I'm, girl, wait. Sheila, I'm going with you. I will go with you to, like, drive up. Because I don't think that was that was completely not right. And this, like, that was like a red flag of, oh, this lady is not your friend. Because he told her don't move, and she didn't. And I'm like, um, you're not Mike's friend. You're her friend. So that was what they said. It's big back behavior. And so T.S. Madison said, so, you know, Fellow big bags, are we, let me, I'm sorry, I'm going to find her actual direct quote. I don't know why this is coming. I'm sorry, it should not be, it should not be this funny. Um, But it, it really is because to watch folks be like, girl, oh my God, girl, I can't do this. <clears throat> so what she had tweeted out, because I remember her saying it, hashtag big bag people, including me, y'all letting Charlemagne get away with that or is we caving in his face? LMK, let me know. These grown-ups decided to get like, oh my gosh, she threatened me. Girl, what? The thing about it is, when he said it, that's big back behavior. I'm like, now, time out. Y'all love to actually say that like bigger women just accept any old thing. As a big back, I'm going to tell you something. All women do. That is not a size thing. The thing about it is, it's like, it's more accepted to hashtag y'all for bigger women to do that because that's what you think. The thing about it, it's only really magnified when it's a bigger woman. Like, oh girl, you just take any old thing. You mean like how a lady who was with a man who got 65 baby mamas and then that man decided to go on a de- after they broke up for I don't know how many years ago, and then after, a few years after that, go on a Sh- Uncle Shay Shay's podcast and say that woman need to leave me the hell alone. I could have sworn Jess Hilarious was not a big back. Could have sworn she wasn't. Um, is Kim Kardashian a big back? Beyonce a big back? Halle Berry a big back? See, the thing about it is y'all only show it Y'all only highlight it when it's a bigger woman. But let's be very clear. A lot of women have to grow out of being boo-boo the fool when it comes to standards of dating and mating. You got to grow out of that. That is not a big back thing, quote unquote. And for Charlemagne to instantly say that, I'm like, y'all, this is what these women who have been telling y'all for years... Charlemagne don't give a fuck about us. He is nobody's ally. He's saying he love black women. He a goddamn lie. This is what they were talking about. Because why is that your thing? So her size means that this. So if she was a skinny woman, you think that you you think only big backs, oh God, bigger women. I hate that word. Um, because I heard I'm big your back and it's like whatever. Um, but you think only bigger women have this issue are you saying hobo chronicles are only for big women Charlemagne? you've been doing this a little bit too long to actually even try to wrap your brain around that so Charlemagne and jess hilarious tried to be like oh i don't know <clears throat> stupid and act like they don't know what the entire hell maddie is talking about you were trying to be like, oh my gosh, she really threatened me. If you feel like this is criminal menacing or a threat to assault, baby, file the papers. Notice you didn't. But it's like, so then they said, if I said this to her, um, y'all would come after me. She also said, I don't understand why she was inserting herself. Yeah, it's crazy for Jess. It's crazy for her to insert herself. Kind of like this random ass woman who is from Baltimore to insert herself in a video from a trans woman from two years ago that was brought up by some white, um, right, white right wing folks when she was advocating for um the reproductive rights or the menstrual 
or the menstrual menstruation rights of trans men and non-binary people. And you decided to insert yourself and say, who's going to stand up for us? Yeah, you wouldn't know anything about inserting yourself when you are not there. That woman on the TikTok who was talking about um, biological women do not own periods. She was never talking about trans women. The minute I heard it, I knew exactly who she was saying. Jess, Jess acts like she, Jess is not hilarious. Jess is dense. I, it's like if you had a brain cell, you would have actually knew that she was talking about trans men because some trans men still have um, their their um, organs that were assigned at birth. So they may still have a female reproductive system, but they identify as a trans man or someone who is non-binary but born with a female reproductive system. They still have it. So technically they are still menstruating. But again... Just so not hilarious, but so dense. It's acting like she don't know that. But it's like, it's not that she don't, she don't know, she don't want to know. So um, when Maddie, because um, her and her co-host, um, they have a podcast. And so since I want to tread a little bit lightly, because I'm like, I don't want to say this word, but it's P-H-A-G Talk, T-A-W-L-K. That is the name of their podcast. Um, and then they're like, you can say it. I'm like, I got better sense. <laughs> That's just for me. It's just like, girl, I don't want to buy. But her, they were talking about it. And so she said, kept saying, just hilarious, just hilarious. And that turned into just saying she's misgendering me. Now, let's be very clear. I thought her saying just hilarious, is it was hilarious to me. There have been times where I have actually said, Girl, that is hilarious. Am I talking, am I misgendering some woman if I say she's hilarious? Girl, shut up. Um, so it's like, you want to do that thing? Because I was sitting here like, when? I was like, let me listen again. Maybe I missed it. Um, but then it turned into, people are going to show you exactly how um, transphobic they can be or anti-woman they can be because I'm going to say this and I mean it. You are not pro women, pro woman, if you have an issue with trans women. You are not pro woman if you do not stand up for trans women. Just kind of like people who say you are not pro black if you don't stand up for black LGBTQ folks. You are not pro woman if you do not stand up for trans women. Argue with your mother or your mother's friend. Do not argue with me because I say what I said. The thing about it is, it's like, I've seen a lot of um, biological women having more of an issue of being called a cis woman than a female. I have never seen so many people ready to riot. How dare she call me cis? Why are you othering me? Because a lot of you made it a point that trans women can't just say that they're women. They got to put trans in front of it for y'all to accept it. But it ain't fun with the rabbit got the gun. Is that what y'all saying? Oh, okay. Um, so then people like say, we are on, like you saw a comment, people like, we agree with, um, everybody agrees with Jess. Does everybody have a different wording? Cause, oh baby, I don't, I don't agree with her with a lot of stuff. So after, I guess they, they're doing this back and forth, um, thing, but TS after, I guess it was like, they had a breakfast club where they responded to, oh my God, and she threatened me and I can't say that I would cave her face in. I'm like, uh. Girl, I'm sorry. Uh, y'all knew daggone well. Like, girl, she is not paying from Total, and you are not Wendy. She is not showing up to your damn studio to come beat your ass. And you knew that. Girl, get up. So, T.S., Maddie said, oh, that's all she had? Yawn. Okay, cool. We don't fuck with each other. I'm fine with that. Just keep my name out your mouth, and I'll do the same. Blessings to you on your journey. And then people started coming um, back up, and then Maddie repo- reposted something that Erica De Niro DT- TV, and me and her are definitely in agreement on a lot of this. The irony is, T. S. Madison was sticking up for a fat, a black fat biological woman after Charlemagne was talking shit, and just Miss Protect Black Women was joining in on the jokes about Risa Tisa. 
That's the gag. And now y'all stand with Jess and her transphobia. Say, uh, hello? It's like, uh, uh, uh. So Maddie's uh, comment to this was, since the blogs got it out of context, now I read, she attempted to read, and I have moved on. But I promise you, if I have to verbally go in that direction again, y'all really not going to like me. P.S. Thank you, Miss Sandra, for understanding how it went. Yeah, because that was the other thing. It's like, it's like who's going to protect us? Obviously not you, Jess Hilarious, because you're going to make it like a talking point, and it's a joke. And you're going to join in with the man who signed your check to make jokes. So the thing about it is, it's like, don't weaponize you being a woman when you want to hate on trans women. That's actually kind of stupid to me, and it's ridiculously old. Because the gag is, many a trans woman sticks up for biological women every chance that they get. So to watch biological women not just be like, you can just leave trans women alone, shut the hell up. They don't. Because you think, I'm sorry, I need people to um, help me understand. Say it really close and you can send it to me, email, DM, whatever you want to do. Tell me how respecting someone's pronouns, respecting how someone's gender identity hurts your identity as a biological woman. Tell me exactly. Give me clear bullet points of how that hurts you as a woman. Clear, tangible reasons. Tangible. It got to be real. Don't be like, well, I feel, nope, nope, not your feelings. Nope. Mm -mm." Tangible. Where's that thing from? (laughs) It's making me think of homegirl from Salt Lake City. Receipts. Timeline. Yeah, that's how I feel. But yeah, the thing about it is, it wouldn't hurt you to do so. Because the thing about it is, I think a lot of people don't want us to say this. Y'all sound like a bunch of white people. Let's be very clear. White people didn't want to just stop calling us niggers either. There were literally studies, or or literally people did not want to basically try to assign being a woman to black women who were born women during slavery and Jim Crow and after, like they didn't want to call us women who were literally birthing children, nursing children, being a nursemaid to white, to white plantation owner. They didn't want to call us women either. Oh, and also put it in medical books that women are genetically have a genetically higher pain tolerance because they black, which that is not true. It was a medical books, babes. So to watch this is so hilarious because <laughs> he hilarious. <laughs> It is hilarious to me. <laughs> because when trans women say, you're just using an excuse to come after me when you don't like something that I say, y'all proving that point. You're proving my point. Because a lot of people like, that would be the easiest way. Like, well, you, you wasn't born a woman. It's like, okay. What else you got? Maddie is 40 fucking years old. You don't think she has not heard worse? It's like, she like, girl, if you want to insult me, do better. <laughs> do better. And, oh, I'm, I wasn't born a woman. I literally have told you that. She always says, I got T's on top and a dick on the bottom. Why are you acting like Maddie ain't said this shit? She said it out of her fucking mouth. And the fact that y'all are literally bigging up some lady who <sighs> has demonstrated that she has issues with literally treating other demographics with respect. Y'all, like, y'all will weaponize anybody as long as they are furthering your obia or ism. And that's baby. It's 2024. Y'all need to grow the fuck up. Completely. So when anim, so, yeah, because I'm going to pin this up, but, um, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm going to pin it up. <laughs> I remember when, An- like, there was a cartoonist who drew this, like, it was a character cartoon about Anne Maria and had, like, this big broad shoulder thing, had a very muscular, because, I mean, one, Anne Maria is very toned. I'm talking about Anne Marie from Beverly Hills. And had, like, this, like, medicine around her um, neck. I think it was supposed to be anesthesia. I mean, some people thought it was, like, um, like hormones. Don't know if it was. And you saw that square gel on and everything, and people had an issue. I was, I was people. Because the thing about it is that whole masculinization of black women are so old 
And I had people going, that's not true. He does this all the time. And I'm sitting here like, look at what he, because I think it was also, it was actually a, a um, queer back man who wanted to go back and forth with me. Like, well, should I have an issue with what he did with Phaedra? I'm like, do you have an issue with what he did? Okay, then shut up. Like, what, what is happening here? It can't be like, well, I'm black and I don't, I don't find it offensive. I'm like, you're not a black woman, so you don't know this. Because here's the thing. If a demo under the umbrella of blackness is saying something is offensive to them, I am not going to say, well, I'm black and I don't have an issue. Like, yeah, because it's not just hitting a black. It's not just driving down one black street. It's at an intersection of being a black woman and how so quickly black women will get masculinized so quickly. So it's like, I think he took it down and people were just like, oh my gosh. I'm like, he didn't have to apologize. Yes, he did. Also, and I'm on this, I'm at this place because I, I don't know, it's probably because like Maddie, I'm over 40. Saying I apologize, it wasn't my intent. It's not an apology for your behavior. Because one, you got to harm whether you intended to or not. Apologize for the harm that you did. Not say, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. That's, this was not my intention. Well, okay. Because it would be kind of shitty if you actually did intend to harm me. So why are you talking to me about what your intention was, babes? I don't care what it was. And also, it doesn't matter. Your intention does not matter because you can actually harm somebody without any clear intention, obviously, because you literally said that wasn't your intention. You don't need to have a certain kind of intention to inflict harm. If someone says, I hurt their feelings, I'm, I'm so sorry for hurting your feelings. I'm sorry that, that how I said it or what I said hurt you. I am sorry. That's it. That's all you have to do. I am not a superstar for actually, actually saying that. I'm like, I'm not even saying that at all. But baby, we got to divorce ourselves from saying like, oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. And I was like, okay, I didn't, I wasn't questioning your intention. I just said you harmed me. I just said you hurt me. I just said I was offended. I didn't question your intention. I say you did it on purpose. Because for some people, when they apologize, they like, I have to have the intent I have to have malicious intent for you to want an apology from me. I'm like, no, that's not how apologies work. Because I always like to use the analogies. You're in a kitchen with somebody. You're cutting, like, uh, cutting up mushrooms. You're cutting up food on a cooking, like, on a cooking knife, <laughs> on a chopping block, right? But I'm mistake, you slice somebody. You Like, you nick them, like, you're walking past, like, you didn't see them, and, like, your knife, they get cut. <coughs> Do they instantly stop bleeding because you say, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't my intent? Is your, in, is your intent making the blood run or the fact that you actually just sliced them? Like, it doesn't matter what your intention was. If someone said you did something to harm them or they are offended by what you said, that's it. Because one, you that's why you actually apologize because you know that wasn't your intention. So apologize for harming somebody. Okay, I can't. You know what? See, I'm... I feel like Rodney, I'm getting upset. I'm getting worked up now. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting worked up now. I'm not gonna get worked up. I'm actually going to like dial it on back and put a pin in this episode. Hey girl. But thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Just wanted to talk a little bit about it, but this whole big bag thing was just very interesting. But yeah, a man who I really want to know what his Fenty foundation number is and what um what brow gel he uses. Cause there's nothing wrong with a man wearing makeup. Cause I'm like, it, it looks really nice. Either he has a good, a very good skin routine and he could, or he has a good makeup routine or both. Right. I just want to know the thing about it is, it's like, we have to walk away from this notion that thinking that women who get treated bad in relationships is cause they are big women. And I'm like, really? So all these skinny women who be telling us their tales of, well, um, what's their issue? Quickly tell me. Oh, you don't have a, uh, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. But everybody, thank you so much. Just wanted to get this episode out. I appreciate everybody for listening and just for um, being with me. But everybody, have a good week and I will be back. Bye.